All right. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me know whenever you're ready for me to jump in. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Reed. Uh, I was asked by Kimberly Collins to give a talk today. Uh, this is actually one that I have given before to a different group of uh, individuals, and uh, she recommended that I uh, prep it for a lightning talk, and so here we are. Uh, the name of it is ne If Need Advice Equals True, uh, which is written in Python there. And this is some of the helpful advice that I found during my coding journey. Uh, to kind of give you a start of who am I? Why, why should you listen to me? Well, my name is Aaron Reed. I have an Associates of Art in Psychology. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Chemistry, and most recently a coding certificate in Python. And uh, right now, I'm someone who is kind of nervous out of my gourd. Uh, I do well with public speaking, but that doesn't keep me from getting the butterflies in my stomach or nerves from getting to me. So let's start with when it comes to learning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a number of things to kind of help you get into the right mindset when it comes to learning code. The first thing is to not succumb to choice paralysis. There are about 700 different coding languages, although only 250 of them are still commonly in use. So if you don't know where to start, the best place is literally anywhere. You know, don't let the fact that there are 250 languages that you could learn that would be useful prevent you from learning one that might be useful to you. If you still don't know where to start after that, uh, my big recommendations would be JavaScript, any of the languages like Node, React, um, any of those that are commonly used would be a good place, or Python. There's a joke that Python is the second best language for everything, including JavaScript stuff. And then if you start learning JavaScript, if you start learning React, or if you start learning Angular, or Python, or Java, or R, or whatever language, if you do it for two weeks and you think, man, I just really don't like it, switch tracks. You may find another language that speaks to you better. When it comes to learning, don't memorize every command. There is simply no need to, and it's also basically impossible. I have been programming in Python for a little over a year now. I spent probably the better part of four or five years programming in HTML4, and I still can't tell you all of the commands that are available in just the base packages of those. But I can tell you if I need to do something, I know where to look. Most coders you'll find have kind of their own individual styles, kind of like a fingerprint when it comes to their code. So if you memorize code, and especially code that isn't yours, it can stifle your growth. I want you to think of programming like solving a puzzle. You don't have to memorize how every piece looks. You just have to know how things fit together. And one of my favorite quotes uh, is from Albert Einstein, where if you paraphrase it, it comes down to, Never, never memorize what can easily be looked up. When it comes to learning, don't be afraid to fail. You're going to spend approximately 90% of your time in what's called broken code land. It doesn't work. It doesn't do what you want it to do. But that's totally fine because that's the first stage of having functional code. And I want to kind of shift the paradigm for you to understand that not working is not the same as failing. And even if your code doesn't work as intended, even if you can't figure it out, someone else may look at it and say, oh, I never thought about how to do that step. Or they may be able to come in and say, this is the problem that you're having. Here's how I would fix it. <laughs> Thomas Edison, uh, again, paraphrasing, I did not fail to produce a light bulb 2,000 times. I found 2,000 ways to not make a light bulb. When it comes to learning, don't feel like you have to adhere to every standard. So what worked for me may not work for you. I'm one of those people that I like to dig in and learn everything I can about, you know, how it was formed, what the mindset is behind it. I like to know the various applications and how it can tie together. But not everyone is me. You may be okay with just understanding what the command is and what it does. You also can go a step farther. What I consider a success or a successful program 
or a failure or acceptable is probably going to be different than yours. Uh, as somebody who comes from the data science field, my idea of a successful program is one that intakes data and outputs information. Um, and to me, the code doesn't have to be the cleanest or the prettiest. It just has to be functional and it has to be a good use of its resources. But you may be more interested in something that looks better, even if the functionality is a little bit less. Understanding your own path will better set you for success. Because if you're modeling yourself after me and your definition of success is different than mine, you're just setting yourself up to fail. Uh, again, paraphrasing and slightly changing the point of it, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is inadequate. If you set yourself against someone else's standard, you're setting yourself up to feel inadequate, which is likely going to cause problems. Now, when it comes to doing, when it comes to actually making your programs, don't just copy code, uh, not only from yourself, but from other places. On top of not helping you grow, it can lead to inferior or even potentially worthless products. Uh, in data science, the worst thing that you can have is not a model that doesn't work, but a model that you think works, but doesn't. It just works is never an acceptable answer. And like I said, you may have something that doesn't work and you may not realize it. Now, there's no witty aphorism here because I couldn't find one to copy paste. I will say this does not mean to not look up code if you are stuck. Google and Stack Overflow are your best friends when it comes to coding. But don't just go on to Stack Overflow and say, okay, this looks like it will work and copy and paste the code. When it comes to doing, don't think that every product has to be a game changer. You know, science usually advances in small steps. You know, there are those breakthrough discoveries like penicillin was, but then there are small steps that lead up to the strongest antibiotic we have right now, vancomycin-3. There were so many small steps between penicillin and vancomycin-3, and not all of them, I would say probably not most of them, were large steps. It was just a small incremental gain. There used to be an old saying in tech, which is, if you build it, they will come. And it's not as accurate as it used to be, but I can almost guarantee that someone out there will find what you write useful. And honestly, even if that person's you, it's great. If you've ever thought, man, I wish that there was a program that would do this thing, or I would find it really convenient if that did this thing, that's a project that's wor worth working on, even if it's just for you. When it comes to doing, don't overly complicate things. Occam's razor, always think of that. The simplest answer is usually the most correct. Most of the time when it comes to coding, they're not just looking for a program that works, they're also looking for elegance. You know, if it takes you 10,000 lines of code, what it takes someone else 1,000 lines of code to write, they're gonna go with the person that it only takes 1,000 lines. Using a simple method to accomplish something impressive far outshines using a complex method to achieve the same thing. Why, and then uh, when it comes to doing, don't feel like you have to do everything yourself. Um, so one of the things that I see most people do is they're like, I want to write this program. I want it to intake the data. I want it to have user input. I want it to analyze the data and I want it to output in a way that's uh, useful for everyone. And they think, okay, well, I have to write the front end in JavaScript. I have to write the the body in Python, I have to go into UX UI to figure out a good way to make it work. Well, instead, make it a collaboration. Find somebody who's good with JavaScript and ask them to do the front end. Find somebody who's UX UI and tell them that you want a way to make it user friendly and look really good. And you focus, in this case, me, focus on Python, focus on the back end. Almost all of the projects you work on in a real life environment at a company are going to be collaborations anyway. And most languages are going to have multiple moving parts that are going to span a number of different languages and sometimes even different disciplines. You know, you may be dealing with the marketing side giving you the information and they may not have it formatted in the right way. You may need to ask them to change the way that they collate the data. 
you could do what you can and learn just a bit about the rest. Learn how the pieces go together in this puzzle so that that way you can communicate better what needs you might have. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent. So having gone over when it comes to learning, when it comes to doing, there are a few more pieces of advice that I feel like are a little bit more catch-all. Uh, so when it comes to anything that you do, you should make every word count. Uh, if you're doing, like me, I'm applying right now. So when I think of resumes or social medias, projects, portfolios, cover letters, even just messages to other people, I only have so many words to impress someone. And I want to make sure that every word I use furthers that goal. Uh, you know, I figure probably about 200 words into a cover letter, I've lost the hiring manager's attention. So I want to make sure that every word in those 200 are useful. You should always, always, always be working on something, regardless of how minor it is. And in the case of myself, should always upload it to GitHub whenever it's possible. Because on top of it keeping your skills sharp, it'll show employers that you are dedicated. You know, whenever you don't have that work history or whenever you don't have, let's say, a bachelor's in computer science or anything like that, a active portfolio that showcases your work is invaluable. It is one of the best things you can do. Even more advice. Understand that job hunting is a numbers game. You're, if you do everything right, you're only going to get a call back around 5% of the time. That was according to a careers coach that I had with my uh, coding program. But remember, only one of them has to say yes. It doesn't matter whether you apply to 10 or 10,000. Only one of them has to say yes as far as you getting a job. Know that it's a marathon and not a sprint. Most graduates are going to spend over six months trying to find their first job. I finished my boot camp in May of this year and didn't get a job offer until July. And even then, it's only data tangential. Even more advice. If you remember absolutely nothing else from today, you should remember this. Do not neglect your network. Networking is one of the best skills that you can have when it comes to anything professional related, but especially when it comes to coding and anything tech related. Of the... 15 to 20 interviews that I have had in the last year, I would say all but two of them came from somebody recommending that I apply to the position and getting the call back from there. I only received two from cold email or cold outreach, and that's through LinkedIn, Glassdoor, ZipRecruiter, places like that. Everything else came from a personal recommendation. So when you're thinking about networking, there are two really good resources that you should use. Uh, the good places to start, the first is Slack. Slack is commonly used by businesses and groups and organizations. And in fact, Techlahoma has one at slack.techlahoma.org. Uh, Free Code Camp is on there as well as many other user groups. And in fact, I'm on there at Aaron Reed. Uh, the second great resource that I would use would be LinkedIn. Uh, free Code Camp is also available on there. I believe that it's linked elsewhere, but for a while, I'm going to leave that uh, group ID on there. Uh, connect with them. They post events. They post meetups. There are fantastic people available through Free Code Camp in Teklahoma to help you grow on your journey. And I'm also on there. You can find me at linkedin.com slash n slash casual chemist. And that's all that I have. I'll wait a few moments to see if there are any questions, but otherwise, thank you for your time and have a great day. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. Um, 